Hey everyone, I'm Aaron. Thanks for checking out this video where we are going to talk a little bit about filming on one of these. I'm sure most of the population has one of these. You may even be watching this video on one now. So let's get into talking about how we go about creating quality video content or film content on one of these little guys. Firstly, smartphones are fantastic for creating content. Whether you're shooting on a newer phone like this Huawei P30 or an older phone like this iPhone SE. The cameras are fantastic quality and you can create some really compelling images using one of these. They're small, compact, easy to get into places that larger cameras often can't. And when I first filmed using one of these, I was surprised at just the level of detail and the quality of the image that I was able to get. Having said that, however, there are limitations to shooting on phones and we're gonna go through a few of those now. The first thing to consider when shooting on a smartphone is camera stabilization. Now, while these cameras are great, they are small and prone to camera shake and so on when you're holding the phone just like this, filming handheld. To avoid that, you wanna pick up something like this little contraption. Now, I picked this one up off uh, eBay or Amazon. Uh, can't remember which, but I'll pop a link in the description for you. Simply, you put your tripod plate on the bottom here, throw your phone in here like this, slide that onto your tripod, and then voila, you've got a nice stable camera shot. Alternatively, you can use something more like this. This is the DJI Osmo mobile phone camera stabilizer, gimbal. So this gives you the opportunity to you just pop your camera in on the top here. It keeps it completely steady and you can get nice fluid moving shots. Knowing that any shake of your hand or anything like that's gonna be nullified by the little gimbal that's attached here. You can, you've got a button on here that you can record with and you can zoom in and out if you're using the DJI app that goes on there as well. So these can be really handy particularly if you want to do lengthy takes, if you're tracking along with people or anything like that. Definitely recommend getting one of these and they're not too expensive either. Power that down, pop that off to the side here. The next thing to consider when using a smartphone is its low light capabilities. Now, I recently shot a short proof of concept for a feature. I was considering shooting on a smartphone. So I used this little iPhone here to shoot my proof of concept. And I wanted to see how the image went uh, and that kind of thing. One, the main thing that I noticed while doing that was that while the camera did produce some great images, as soon as I needed to bump up the ISO a little bit to get a little bit more light into the sensor, or if I was shooting in a low light scenario, uh, it didn't do too well. As the ISO got higher up to 400, 500, 700, there was quite a lot of noise getting put into the image. I really needed to keep the ISO down below 100 in order to maintain that sharp, crisp, clean image. So if you have a look at these two shots here, the one on the left has very high ISO. It's set at 768, which is the maximum for the camera we were shooting on. And you can see the noise in the image as opposed to the one on the right where we shot at a much lower ISO, uh, under 100 and you can see that it's a much cleaner image with less noise in it. So that's definitely a factor to consider when choosing these cameras. So I ended up not shooting my feature on the phone for that reason, simply because I had a very, very limited budget for the film that I was shooting and I could not afford to bring in the amount of lights that I would have needed to light my nighttime scenes or anything like that had I opted to shoot on this. So while the image is great when you've got enough light there, if you're shooting in low light situations, it may not be the best option for you. Another thing that a lot of people don't consider when shooting on a smartphone is battery time. Now, while phones may last a day or two off, you know, with normal use, once you've got this on constantly, and it's you know using the screen, you're doing all these functions on the phone to create your video, you're gonna chew through the battery really quick. So you're gonna to need to, at the very least, have some power banks or something there so you can maintain charge on your phone, on your camera, or better yet, have multiple phones that you can shoot from. 
When I did my proof of concept, I had two phones on set with me. And even though we were only shooting for around about three to four hours, uh, I did have to change and move on to the second phone because the battery did uh, run low. Multiple phones, it's a good idea. Also, when you're running this phone constantly when you're making content and filming, you're going to notice that they're gonna get quite hot. I don't know if any of you have had an occurrence where you're using your iPhone and then all of a sudden it says, sorry, I'm overheating. You need to put me down for a while, turn me off. Obviously, you do not want that happening on a film shoot. Um, I've seen instances where people have actually attached ice bricks to their phone so they can keep it cool while they're filming. I would, I, I haven't gone that far when filming with one of these, but I would just simply recommend having a second or third phone so you can just, if one needs to cool down, power down, just put that one aside, pick up your next one, and you can continue filming. Now, while we established that the cameras in these phones are great and you know they give you a variety of options, you can often nowadays shoot at multiple frame rates, you can shoot in 4K if you want or even higher. The standard settings that the phone enables you to film in are still not that great. If you want greater control of your image and if you're shooting a film, I would highly recommend that you have as much control over your image as possible. You're going to want to get an app that opens up more possibilities for you. I would highly recommend you get a little app called Filmic Pro. I'll put a link up in the description for you so you can um, go check it out. But Filmic Pro is a professional camera app that basically unlocks the phone for you. It's around about $20, the app, but it's going to give you the ability to set your exposure, set your ISO, your shutter speed, uh, your focal points, all that kind of thing. Basically the control that a cinematographer wants over the image, this app is going to get, give you. All right, so if we just open our Filmic Pro app here, all of a sudden you see this kind of screen and you've got a whole world of possibilities opening up to you. So if you just go into settings here, you've got resolution, frame rate, hardware, audio settings that you can all adjust in here. So I've got it on 16 by nine at the moment. Let's go down to just Filming, well, let's go HD. I'm filming in Filmic Extreme quality. You can change that down if you would like, um, but I wouldn't recommend it. Frame rate, I'm shooting at 24 at the moment, but depending on the resolution that you're shooting at, you can change frame rates and depending on the capabilities of the smartphone that you're using. Back on this screen, on this corner, you've got white balance. We can adjust different white balance we want. Now, because I'm shooting at 24 frames a second, I have here the shutter speed locked in at 1 48th of a second. Just by clicking on that, we can unlock it, but I'm gonna leave it locked for now. And then the top number there is your ISO. Now at 736, it's gonna be creating quite a noisy image, but obviously we're shooting in low light and to get it down to, you know, where we're not gonna get much noise, it's getting quite dark. So you want to throw in extra light in there Unless you're happy to have the noisy image, then you can adjust the ISO back up. Now on this side, we have our focus there. And we can just flick that over and zoom in and out. As you can see, this Filmic Pro app is gonna give you a lot greater control over your image than simply using the internal settings that the phone offers you. 20 or $30 for an app is nothing. It's gonna enable you to create a much better looking product. If you want to take it a step further to get an even better image out of your camera, these lenses, while they do a great job for what they are, if you chuck one of these little guys on it, this is an anamorphic lens adapter. And what this does is it's going to enable you a wider field of view. You're going to start shooting in CinemaScope, which is fantastic. So now while in the app already, in the Filmic Pro app, you could shoot, you could decide to shoot in 2.35 to one aspect ratio, so you get that wide screen. What this adapter is actually doing, it's giving you a wide, wider anamorphic field of view. It just has a different look to the image, which quite frankly, I love. So all it does is it's just gonna slide on like that. This lens adapter, it's going to widen the field of view and squash the image in. 
Now it's important when using this adapter, it fits nice and snug over the phone. So you can't have any cases on the phone or anything like that because you want it, you're not gonna be able to get it on otherwise. So you wanna just slot it in like that. So this is a Moondog Labs 1.33 times anamorphic adapter. Moondog Labs have a whole range of anamorphic adapters and you'll just get the one depending on you know what phone you are going to be shooting with. This one is obviously designed for this type of iPhone. So if I go back into the app here, and what you're gonna to wanna to do when you throw this on, is at the moment it's gonna be stretching the image because it's squeezing more of the image in from the sides. So we're gonna to wanna to go into our hardware and select that we've got a 1.33 anamorphic lens adapter on, and then it's gonna come out at the correct aspect ratio for our anamorphic image. And I think this is a brilliant little feature. If you wanna shoot anamorphic stuff, anamorphic looks great and shooting on a smartphone, um, you're not gonna be able to get anamorphic cheaper than this, so it's a great option. So if you really want that fantastic anamorphic cinematic look, I would highly recommend grabbing one of these anamorphic lens adapters. They're not that expensive, and they just give your image something different that just makes it pop from the screen and just separates it from the rest of the gang out there shooting on these smartphones. So as you can see, smartphones are a great tool at your disposal. Like anything though, it's all about what you're creating. What is your content? What is your film about? What look are you trying to achieve? While these are great, don't just shoot on a smartphone because hey, you can. You wanna make sure the aesthetic that you're after matches the camera that you're using. So, and make sure you take into consideration the limitations that we've mentioned. So if you're shooting a film in a lot of low light, but you want that smartphone look, perhaps you need to invest in a bigger lighting crew or some more lights, just to make sure you get those crisp images and that quality production that you're after. To finish off with, I'm gonna play you the short uh, proof of concept film that I produced using this iPhone SE with this Moondog Labs anamorphic lens adapter. And Although it wasn't really required for the setups that I used in the film, I did use my DJI Osmo uh, camera stabilizer for that as well. Because it was a bit of a test shoot, I was playing around with different ISO levels on the camera. So you may notice a few times where there seems to be a little bit more noise in the image, even though it was shot in bright sunlight, I did play around with the ISO. And so some of the, the shots that you'll see have a little bit more noise in it. Uh, and that's one of the things that I mentioned when it came time to choosing the camera for the feature version of this film, which we've just shot. I decided not to go with shooting on the smartphone simply because of those limitations. I shot the film on a Panasonic GH5 instead, where I had the option of you know, using much faster lenses, which enabled me to shoot in low light conditions a lot easier. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see some of our different film trailers, short films and more tips on filmmaking. But for now, enjoy watching our short. I don't want to get sand in my shoes. Seen you down here quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, before, you know. I used to jog on that path up there. Back when people used to do that sort of thing. 
Doesn't really seem like there's much point now. Kinda hard to miss someone in that get up. I like it here too. It's like you can be alone if you need to. I made one of those lists. All the stuff you should do, you know. I got all my cash out. Told my boss to go shove it. Set fire to my desk. That was fun. I guess. I was going to make one of those TikTok things. Hashtag checking out or something. There's uh, about 500 in there. If you want it, uh, some places might still take it. But... This is it. Thanks. What for? I don't know. Just helped that someone was here. Thank you. 